It is a golden age for heroes and villains, and this was a terrible idea. Join us as we play. Kabam. Kapow is a one to two player dice battling game. It can be played in teams, so there is a team mode, so you can play with four and it's just two people on either side, but really it's a one to two player game. You're taking the role of a hero trying to save the city from the villain's oppressive clutches, or you're playing as the villain trying to take over the city. By how you do this, you just roll dice, you attack, you defend. It's very similar, in essence, to what Dice Throne does offer. If Dice Throne is your kind of game and you really enjoy it, you might want to stick around to see what this game entails and what this game is like, because I think you might well like it. I would definitely recommend it if you did. Um, in this video, I'm going to open the box, I'm going to go through the bits and bobs, show you what's in there, roughly show you how to play the game, and then give you an overall overview, 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 that's a word I'm going to use, an overview, thank you very much. I'm not going to edit that either, that's going to be in the video, so thank you for that foolish error that I made but it's in the video enjoy um I'll give you an overview of the video and you can make your own opinions of of what it is and what it's like so firstly the main thing you'll notice with Kapow is it is very much that golden age of comics that classic style that classic font everything resembles a comic book um from the font used on the back um and the details of it, it, it all is very, very comic booky. And that, um, not it's just plastered on the outside of the box, but the inside too. The instruction manual is beautiful and it looks like a comic from the back, from the front, and going through the actual rules of the game, everything looks like it's been torn out of a golden age comic book with amazing art style and really simple, straightforward to follow instructions. So in the box you have two screens, a hero and a villain screen. Why the screens? Well with in Kapow, when you're rolling dice, you're rolling all at the same time. But you don't want the other player to see what you are rolling. So you hide everything behind a little screen. Now the screens are really good because not only do they hide everything that you're doing behind this screen, but also what's great is that it is a guide to tell you exactly what the dice do. It's your player reference. So not only do you have a player reference on the back, it's hiding, it's a fully functional screen. It's a really cool idea. Um, also telling you what the dice have on the back. So you have these really cool screens, again, in that sort of art style. Then you have your actual player boards. Now, for your first game, you're recommended just to use the hero book and the villain book. Um, so just as basic hero and villain. And again, designed to look like little tiny comics that you open out with all of your attacks and stuff, which is really cool. Now there are asymmetric abilities available. So what you can do is you can actually be specific characters. So when you're playing and more used to what you're playing, there are lots of villains and heroes that you can play as to add to the basics to give your characters a, a little more. So on the basic game, you have a health of 20 and you're rolling to try and beat each other up essentially. With this, the asymmetric abilities will give you slightly different, you either get more or less dice at a higher health or lower health, more dice, that kind of thing. So there are more asymmetric abilities in there, which are really cool. The dials, you have the hero and villain dial, health dial, I really like the health dials on these because they do have those little indentations that you can put your finger in to actually turn it. So some of those other dials that are a bit more awkward to turn, you've actually got a really easy uh, dial on that as well. Then you have your dice. The dice are really nice. Um, chunky little dice. Um, there's five different colours, so you have blue, purple, Green, yellow, and red. They're just there. Look at those. Ooh. Ooh, dice. Uh, yeah, so you get your five dice. So when setting up the game, you will give each player a ref reference book for your for your battle, what you do during during your turn and how you roll. You will give 
if you are playing, not your first game necessarily, but if you are playing, you can have one of the asymmetrical characters, but I won't worry about that this time. So you get your book, you get your health dial, and you get a player screen, as I said. So we put a player screen in front of us, ready to do battle. Now the other thing that's cool about this, and it does separate it from other dice rolling battle games, is the fully customizable dice. Now every player, when they're playing the game, gets one dice of each colour to start with, and they will also get one of these. A completely blank dice. That dice, you will then put in one dice face at the beginning, or die face, whichever one you want to say, into the dice. So you actually have a, a face. So when you're rolling it, you have to hope that you can get that. As you're playing the game, you can get more, you can unlock more and more die faces, and then you can actually attach more die face to your dice, so it's a more powerful dice. So it's a fully customizable battle dice um, within. Um, which is a really cool difference because then everyone is doing something slightly different and it makes you feel like your character is different. Your character's abilities are upgrading better. You're becoming a better hero. You're becoming a better villain because you are upgrading your character how you want your character to play and how you want them to be upgraded. And that I find is a really cool feature in this game. How do we play? Well, let me bring you down to the board and we can see exactly how it's done. So here you can see your board. So we've opened it up. We are playing as the hero. And we've opened it up and we can see all of the different types of attack, defense, and power-ups that we can do during the game. We'll take our health dial and we'll set it to 20 because we're gonna be setting up the basic version of the game. So we'll pop that up here. We've taken our five die and we've taken our special die with no die faces. Now, all of the different types of attacks and defense that we can do, obviously all do different things. And there's a load of iconography, which I will let you find out a bit later, but I'll, I'll play some dummy roles. Evidently, this would all happen behind the screen as well. So you wouldn't necessarily see what your opponent's doing. And that's really important when it comes to attacking and defending because you are doing it all simultaneously to an extent. So you roll your five dice, like so. Okay, so what we've got here, we've got one wild. So this lightning bolt indicates that we hit a wild. We have a punch, we have a shield for defense. We have another wild and we have two blank. So this symbol here indicates a blank. Now you can place those die anywhere on the symbols on this board that you want to do. So. For example, we want to do a punch. So we might use one fist and a blank die here to do a punch, which is three base damage. Now, if we wanted to, we could do a second attack, which is an attack kicker. So you have to do a base attack before you can do an attack kicker, which we can do. We could add a wallop to it. So we've done a zap and a wallop. I love the fact that all of these words are written in that comic book style. It says biff, pow, clonk, whack, slug, you know, that kind of thing. It's really cool them thematically. So we've done, we're going to do five damage. So three for the base attack and we add two to that because of the attack kicker. Now we don't know what the opponent is going to do. So we might want to add some defense. So we're thinking, okay, we could defend one or we could use our block. So we could use this and any die including the blank faces, you only don't, you can only not use blank when it tells you on specific things to use blank. To not use blank, sorry. So that'll do, that'll give us defense of two defense. But what that also will do is that will be able to gain us one non-wild side of our face. So when we've gone through the battle and everything like that, we can pick one of our faces. So for example, we might take a power up face, put it in our supply. And then after we've completed everything, we can attach it to a die so we can use it and we've upgraded our die. The other thing I might we might quickly do is with this die, we'll put it here and we'll also gain another non-wild face. 
So in the end of the game, in the end of this round, we're going to cause five damage. We're going to, have to defend ourselves for two if our attacker does decide to hit us, and we're also going to gain two faces for our die, which is a pretty good roll. One of the great things about this game, obviously, you have ways of getting extra dice. So these are classed as trait dice. So if you have that symbol and you have this symbol here, you'll gain a new die of any colour you want. So you can take one of these from the pool of dice. They are limited, so you might want to be quite specific and quite strategic about which dice you use. Again, it's being very, um, it's a very good way to create your own character and your own world within the game, which I really, really like about this game. If you use this and this symbol, just like the swooshy symbol, you can actually then gain another action dice. So you'll get a second one of these. And evidently, the more of these you have, the more powerful they are. Um, and evidently, the more die you roll at the end, you're going to gain more abilities, be able to do better power, better punches, better defense, and that kind of thing, which is a really, really cool little feature that this game really has. Um, once you've decided where you're placing your die, so if we go back to where we were, um, you then pull your screen up together, you, you both pull your screen up at the same time, and then you battle it out. You see there will be a de designated first player, there will be a first player that will obviously attack first, then you defend, and then you defend, and, and then you'll attack, and they'll defend. The player with the higher defence is becomes the start player. So if my opponent defended at four, so I hit him for five, they defended for four, so what happened there is they only lost one health, and I only defended for two, as you can see here, they would then become, I would then, they they would stay as the start player and I would be the second player. If my defence is higher than theirs, then I become the start player, they become the, the second player. Um, so it's a really clever balancing act because do you want to be the start player um, or do you want to do loads and loads of attacks, but then you won't ever get the first turn of picking dice, hitting, defending, that kind of stuff. And you can really multiply. And it's got that sort of Super Smash Brothers feeling of like combos. So when you, you use your attack and then you have an attack kicker, and then there's an attack multiplier. So you're like comboing your chain of, of punches and kicks and that kind of thing. And fundamentally, that's the game. You roll, you roll your dice, you place your dice, you lift your screens, you see what happens to each other. You put your screens back down, you collect all your dice, you buy your new dice, everything like that. Then you roll again, over and over again. And I really like Dice Throne. It's a really good game um, where you're throwing dice, Yahtzee style to try and get the highest score and best ability that you can out of three rolls, using the best attack you can, using cards to defend and add multipliers and modifiers and that side of things. I think this is really cool. I really like this game. I really love this game. This is, this is really good. I, this, for me, a single roll, you place your dice, you do the attack simultaneously, it's quick, it's fast. There's no, you're not locked into anything. You, you roll the dice, you have to do what you're gonna do, you do it. With a dice thrown, there's that bit of analysis paralysis. Oh, I've rolled my dice now, I'm going to pick up certain ones. I'm going to roll again. What should I roll? I don't know. And it takes a little bit longer to get into and flow. I love the fact that it's pre-packed and everything, but, but Kapow for me is, it's a perfect superhero battling game where you do feel like you are upgrading, you're levelling up, you are, you're doing all that kind of video game quality of, of just building up a character in a in a video game and then you're using all those extra powers to battle away and you and you also feel that kind of pulling and and like do I do I do a super attack now do I get all my attacks out now but but then I've got no defense so whatever they're gonna do to me I'm gonna so there is that real real balance of what do I do how do I attack what is the best thing to do and that for me makes this game such a good 
game to get to the table and play because it always is different. Whoever you play with is always going to be building that customizable die differently, or you might be customizing that die differently. The first time you play it, those die, those faces, that didn't really work out. I didn't get the points that I wanted to, or it didn't really give me the, the, the win. I lost. I lost. Must have been that dice that I created. Was it that dice I created, or was it just bad luck? So there is there's mitigation in the luck of the die. There's a really cool mechanism of rolling your dice, covering it, and then there's that surprise element when you lift up those shields. It's it's really exciting and it's really good. This this should it's it's relatively new out. Um, it's it should fly off the shelves, no pun intended. Um, there's a couple of boxes available. There's this one and there is another one, um, slightly different heroes. Again, asymmetrical boards much more abilities, much more powers available to you um, when you're playing this game. It's just, it's just really good. And I'm excited to explore more of it. Um, I'm excited to play more of it. I, I feel like when I get this to the table and I play a game, I play one game, it finishes, I go again, and we play it again. Dice thrown, I roll the dice, I play the game, I go, that was fun. Let's put it back. Let's put it away and play something else. But this I can come back to again and again. And that is, to me, is the mark of a good game. And I don't have any seals or of approval. But if I did have a seal, it would be approving. If that's a if that's a thing. So Kapow from Wise Wizard Games. Phenomenal little game. Um, definitely worth a try. Um, cool. Catch you later.